Greetings and welcome. Part one of this segment explores inverted 5-7 chords and their natural resolutions in major. Further installments will explore inverted 5-7s in minor keys. Writing exercises in between will provide you, the student, with opportunities to apply and practice these skills, theory, and practice. Any of the three tones of a triad can be positioned as the bass note. The three positions of a triad, therefore, are the root position, first inversion, and second inversion. The bass is figured as shown, 5-3, meaning root position, 6-3, first inversion, and 6-4, second inversion. Since any of the four tones of the dominant seventh chord may occupy the bass position, reason dictates that the 5-7 must have not only a first and second inversion, but also a third inversion for a total of four positions. Complete figures of the thorough bass are as follows. 7, 6 5, 3, 6 4, 3, and 6 4, 2. The base of the first inversion 5-7 is the third of the chord. Adding the root, seventh, and fifth of the complete chord puts the upper voices at respective intervals of sixth, fifth, and third above the bass note, hence the figuring 6-5-3, often abbreviated as 6-5. This applies regardless of whether the upper voices are arranged in close position or open position. What counts is the fact that the third of this seventh chord is situated in the lowest voice. Close. Open. The base of the second inversion is the fifth of the 5-7 chord. The upper voices, assigned the third root and seventh of the chord, are at the intervals of sixth, fourth, and third, respectively, above the bass note. Hence the figuring 643, often abbreviated as 43. This applies regardless of whether the upper voices are arranged in close position or in open position. What counts is the fact that the fifth of the seventh chord is situated in the lowest voice. Close. Open. The base of the third inversion is the seventh of the seventh chord. The upper voices, assigned the fifth, third, and root of the complete chord, are placed at the respective intervals of sixth, fourth, and second above the bass note, hence the figuring 642, abbreviated as 42, often just 2. It doesn't matter if the upper voices are arranged in close position or in open position. What is important is the fact that the seventh of the 5 7 chord is situated in the lowest voice. Close. Open. In practice, the seventh of the 5-7 inverts as a major second and also forms a tritone, diminished fifth, augmented fourth, with the third of the chord. The third, in turn, is the leading tone of the key. These are dissonant intervals, and dissonance must be properly dealt with. With regard to the resolution of the 5-7 inversions, let us consider the paths of least resistance. The root of the 5-7 is also the fifth of the tonic triad. It is the common tone between the two chords, which we should retain in the same voice. Inverting the 5-7 does not alter this relationship. Reconsider that the third of the 5-7 is the leading tone. With few exceptions, the leading tone must resolve up to the tonic tone, especially when the leading tone is in the bass or soprano. Reconsider that the fifth of the 5-7 is the supertonic of the key, and as such may resolve by step either down or up. Upward resolution of the fifth leads to doubling the third of the subsequent tonic triad, which is fine. An upward leap of a fourth or downward skip of a third to the dominant scale degree is sometimes encountered as well. Here, the leading tone is in the bass, an outer voice. It is for this reason that the first inversion or 5-6-5 chord must in practice resolve to the root position 1 or tonic triad.
observe that both third and seventh of five seven resolve by diatonic step in contrary motion, no skipping or leaping, and the root of the five seven is retained in the same voice on into the one chord. The same principle applies to open position chord voicings. The leading tone in the bass, the chord third, must resolve upward, the seventh downward. Observe again that both third and seventh of five seven resolve by diatonic step in contrary motion, and the five seven root stays in the same voice. Only the fifth of the five seven has a choice of direction, whether up or down. With the fifth in the bass, there are two possible chords of resolution, one or one six. In the first instance, resolving to the root position one presents nothing unusual, whether close or open voicing. As for the second instance, resolving to the one six, the third of the first inversion tonic chord is naturally doubled. The 5 7 chord in third inversion is figured as shown 6 4 2, or just 4 2, or 2. This inversion must resolve to the first inversion tonic or 1 6 chord. Why? Sevenths are dissonant. When the seventh of the chord is in the bass, it resolves its dissonance by descending a step. Here are five four twos in which the fifth of the chord, the supertonic, resolves by an upward step. The motion of remaining chord members follows the natural course of least resistance, common tones, conjunct motion to nearest neighbors, and so forth. On the other hand, here are a couple of 5-4-2 to 1-6 progressions with a leap, or a skip, to the dominant scale degree. Perfectly acceptable. Today we discussed the three inversions of the dominant seventh chord, how they are figured in the thorough bass, 5-6-5, 5-4-3, and 5-4-2, or 5-2, and how to resolve the dissonances inherent to the 5-7 chord. Interestingly, these always work as complete chords, the inverted 5-7s, and their resolutions to the 1 or 1-6. One yes, it is sometimes necessary to double the third of the tonic triad, but neither chord needs to be incomplete. This is unlike the root position cadence, where we often found it better to omit the fifth of the 5-7 in order to resolve to a complete tonic chord. In a subsequent presentation, we'll present a few practical exercises on writing the various inverted dominant seventh to tonic triad progressions. Thank you for watching. If you like what you are learning, please share a link to the video. Post a question if you need clarification on the above points. Subscribe for updates by also tapping the bell icon next to the subscribe button on the video watch page.